part two of the Buzz Bubble with Chuck Porter of Crispin, Porter, and Boguski. Now back to our host, Kevin Kelly, on the Buzz Bubble. So you mentioned uh, NBC, and I saw a quote somewhere that, you know, when they asked you to come on over and, and they said, uh, see if you can bring some of the Porter juju to the rest of the other 30 agencies on the bus. How's that going? <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> That's kind of interesting. You know, you know, I'll, the truth is that started about eight years ago and I thought it would be easy. I thought, okay, all right, I know how to do this, you know, uh, so I can pop into if they have another agency and say, you should do this and this and this and do, do, do. And I really thought that, you know, and, and it's so totally not true. And I, I realized after about a year and a half of, of, you know, sort of frustration, I realized the only way to, to make a great agency is one client at a time, one ad at a time, one meeting at a time every day. You know, you can't pop in and say, here's a magic duster, here are three great pieces of advice or whatever the hell, right. it doesn't work. You know, you gotta, the way, the way to make good work is to just go in every day and make it. So, you know, I, I think maybe I've been helpful in, in trying to give some advice and trying to review some work and stuff like that, but um, the, you know, the only way to make an agency great is to hire great people and let them do it. So you haven't been able to bottle the Porter G? Uh, I don't I think can't get a can on the way. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I'll happily <laughs> sell you a can. It won't do you any good. But you know, and in the spirit of full disclosure, it's useless. <laughs> okay. So what can I tell you? CPB culture. Uh, we covered that a little bit. Do you ever think about breaking it down to kind of like motto or you know, putting it in a, you had to put it in a nice little sort of statement? Have you done that? Or? Yeah, we have done that. We, we created a, I don't know, whatever you call it, a mission statement or a, a whatever, a long, long time ago, almost 20 years ago. And it was to do, at that time, it was to do the most written about, talked about advertising in the world, which was pretty, you know, it was a pretty, I mean, we were, I think, 80 people at the time. So it was pretty grandiose. 80 people at that time. Yeah, yeah, at that time. But, but it was, it was so clear cut because, you know, we gave, we printed it on a card and gave it to everyone in the agency and people taped it to their laptop or whatever. They didn't have laptop, whatever. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was, we wanted to do the most written about, talked about work in the world. And so we measured everything against that. And, and I think that it, it really sort of helped us to, or inspired us to reach a lot, you know, and to look at stuff and say, this is good, but it's not that great. Nobody's going to write about this. No one's going to talk about this. Do it again. Um, and, and so I think that that was, I think that was a helpful thing. And I don't know if it was a philosophy or whatever, but, but that's what we sort of um, measured ourselves by um, for a long, long time. And, and I guess if, if there's a sort of a soundbite of our culture, that's probably what it is. Um, but it's hard, you know, and, and, I, and the bigger you get, I think the harder it gets, you know. I, I mean, I was always, when we were little, I always thought, okay, when we get to 100 people, we won't be any good anymore because I had this thing in my mind that that the Romans, you know, the Romans had centuries and centurions because because their belief was that one leader can know a hundred people, and when it gets to be more than a hundred, you have to make another one and create another centurion, and you know, what it's some classical thing, but I figured, okay, the Romans had a great run, about 400 years, you know, better than most agencies, they probably knew something, so I always figured. When we get to be more than 100 people, we're going to be broken. Um, and we got to be more than 100, and, and the work seemed to get better. So at, at that point, I quit measuring how many people we had and just said, you just have to look at the work. And as long as it's not getting worse, we don't seem to be broken. But trying to figure out ways to, to institutionalize the culture when we can no longer all sit and have a beer together, you know, every week, um, that, that's what I really spend most of my time doing. It's hard to do. I don't know yeah. if we've done it. We'll, well see. No, work is still great. So you work it, there's, of press. there's a lot of good work. I yeah. still agree that if you make great work, earning your clients and your agency uh, some more press and recognition is the right, you know, not the metal on the walls and the can lines and, you know, that's nice, but it's the recognition side. Right? Well, it's the I love this. Yeah, it's the buzz. I mean, if people aren't talking about the work that we do, you know, if it doesn't become sort of a part of popular culture and conversation, then it's not good enough. That's what it's supposed to do. So. If you guys continue to do, to do it, Mike, you know, I, I, I hate to ask, you know, uh, some of your favorite work, because everybody consistently says, oh, I love to choose my favorite, most recent work. Um, the baby carrot stuff you guys did, it was amazing. That was amazing, yeah. That was just, amazing. just, you know, people forget, because 
it's so easy to forget about the idea behind it because when you create something as interactive and fun and sensational as that, they forget that the idea somebody came in some one morning said, well, we're going to make it like junk food. Eat that was it. That's exactly right. That was and the idea. And it was really, really sensational. Well, you know, that was, that, that's an interesting. I, I happen to love that campaign. And you know what happened is the, the clan is Bolt House Farms and they grow about half the carrots in America. They're carrot farmers. It's like a co-op of carrot farmers, right? In fact, we signed the commercials, a bunch of carrot farmers, right? And, and they came in and they said, okay, we want to, we got to sell more carrots. And carrots are healthy and carrots, you know, and we're like, everybody knows that. Doo -doo -doo. So we looked at it a little bit and we said, okay, they can create these little mini carrots, which they call baby carrots, which are like snacky carrots, right? And we said, all right, snack food, the market for snack food in these little bags is roughly $20 billion a year. Carrots sell one billion dollars a year, so it's pretty clear what we got to be, you know. We, and so we said we'll make them into snack food, and we created the new packaging and 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 all the stuff we did. You know that that started in two test markets, um, Pittsburgh and someplace else I can't remember. And we did the vending machine in the high schools, and wow. and and it was amazing. It got on the front page of the New York Times. It got I can't remember how many tens of millions of media impressions. And so the um, the when we showed the results of these test markets to the client, to the carrot guys, and said, here's, you know, in these two test markets, here's how many impressions we got, here's what's happening, here's what's happening to sales. What they said to us, and this is a direct quote, they said, we're gonna need more carrots, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. And they were dead serious. Eh? We're gonna need more carrots, you know. So they're buying more land and planting more we're carrots. Up, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Like it's something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard you mention the, 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 one of the future models, this risk reward, shared with client and the agency um, is, is something that may come down the pike for all of us. Um, where do you think that sits today and in the next? I don't know. You know, I, th I think a lot of clients and a lot of agencies are, are, are very reluctant to do that. I think they're a little bit afraid of it because it's, it's a kind of a new model. To me, it makes an enormous amount of sense. You know, if an agency is really going to be a partner, a partner with the brand, they ought to share the risk and they ought to share the rewards. You know, we're always willing to do that. Every contract that we have, I think virtually with every client we have, is at least to some degree performance based, right? It's like how well they do, is, you know, we're incented to do the same thing we are. I think it does two things. Number one, we do a lot of very unusual work, right? And, and I think it's good for clients to be aware that, that we're incented by the same measures that they are because Otherwise, it's like, well, you guys are just trying to win awards or da-da-da. And, and so I think that that's one thing it does. But I think the other thing is, in a very real way, it makes agencies think harder about what's really going to work. You know, what is really going to work when it gets out of there? Because if it doesn't work, we're not going to get paid. Um, and so I, I think, I don't know this, but I, I, I can't believe it's not going to become more prevalent. I, th I can't believe that, that more and more clients are not going to want to you know, want their agencies to have skin in the game with them. Um, I would, but like I say, a lot of agencies are not enthusiastic. I mean, I, I I'm not hearing this everywhere. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, well, I mean, I, you know, I'm the chairman of the of the four A's, the American Association of Advertising, and I hear them say, "We just want to get paid for it." Some agencies say, "We just want to get paid for our time," and if we put in 140 hours, just pay us for the time. And I don't really see that as being. You know, I, I mean, that's more of a corporate lawyer. Yeah, I, was gonna I, say, I, 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 I think that we're more yeah, of like a personal injury lawyer, you know, which is, you know, we're <laughs> going to go in, piece. right, and we'll take a third of whatever you get, pal. And I'd be happy to do that with any of our clients anytime. We'll work for free, just give us a third. Um, we haven't actually proposed that yet, but it's not a bad idea. As far as measuring success, and, and, and you know, the old school was you just watch the sales numbers. Now we have so many metrics we can check all along the way, which is great. I love that. And, you know, it helps you maybe change what you're doing, measure what you're doing. And, you know, if you're doing a lot of things, the good things, you can see right away that are, that are uh, that's our problem as an agency, to, to see that change. Do you, what do you see on the client side? Do they care beyond the sales numbers? Do they want to see all the analytics? I, they I want to know? Or do they just want to see the sales needle move? I, I mean, I think, I think analytics, is um, is a sort of a popular buzzword right now. And you're right, because we have the technology to give you anything you want, people want it, you know? I think that ultimately, um, the, the people who really know what they're doing are gonna be able to distill those analytics into something that's really meaningful. 
because you know somebody comes out and says you know we did we d we did this Facebook page and it got a million hits. I don't know if it's relevant. You know, maybe right. that's maybe it's good, maybe it's not good. I, I know you have a lot of eyeballs, but does it really matter? Ultimately, either sales or whatever you're measuring. It's not always sales. You know, when we got when we right. got well, when we had Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper came to us and and, and we said well, we're going to do this performance based. And they're like, we've already sold our first year's allocation. So what, what, what we really want to do is we want to create a perception. We don't want the Mini to become a girl's car, like the Beetle is. We don't want to. So, so what we're going to measure is perception. And if, if you can keep us male, or at least essentially male, we'll pay you more. If we become a girl's car, we'll pay you less. So that's what they were measuring. You know, and, and, it's, and, and I think all clients, no, many clients have have real different objectives and different things that they're paying for with their advertising dollar and, and that's what you have to buy so that's a great tip that i didn't know that I, i'm a mini cooper fanatic well of course you are because it's a guy's, guy's car. car there it is right. yeah but i didn't true. know early on that that was one of the because well I, it's such I a know cute they sold years worth of car. But it's a, it, it's such a cute oh, little yeah. car oh, i can that, see how it would go that way no the, yeah the, yeah that that they were bmw had a real concern that this is going to end up being beetle 2 and it's going to be a girl's car yeah wow. That's it for part two with Chuck Porter of CPB. Tune in next week for part three. Years ago, a, a guy in the agency came to me and said, you know, you got to start blogging. You need to start writing blogs because, you know, people will be interested in what you have to say and you got to start doing blogs. And I'm like, okay, I, I will do that. Who will pay me to write this? Because I get paid to write, right? And they're like, no, 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 you don't get paid. And I'm like, well, I'm not really interested in that, you know. Next week on the Buzz Bubble.